Good Friday evening, Tallahassee, and welcome to FSU Weather. I'm student meteorologist Jordan Frazier. And I'm student meteorologist Matt Mackey. Conditions are looking real nice right now in Tallahassee and across much of the southeast. But we're going to focus today on the show on a little bit of severe weather that's forming out in the Pacific off the coast of Mexico. Yes, we have Hurricane Patricia out there right now. It's currently a Category 5 hurricane at, ma at peak, actually. It had sustained winds at 200 miles per hour and a pressure at 880 millibars, which is the lowest recorded in history. I know, that's insane. It's also the third strongest hurricane that's uh, ever been recorded by meteorologists throughout history. It's crazy. It's the strongest hurricane recorded in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. and currently, it's at 190 miles an hour, 900 millibars, and expecting some catastrophic damage to Mexico and surrounding cities. Mm -hmm. But right now, we're going to throw it off to Casey for a quick overview of what's coming later in the show. Central Doppler radar, a nice afternoon across our region. Just a clear, beautiful day. We'll be showing some pictures of that as we get throughout the show. Temperatures across our area, they're nice as well. Mid upper 80s, maybe even a little on the warm side across our region. We see 87 in Tallahassee, 83 St. Marks, 85 Monticello. So you get the idea. We're watching the situation relatively nice. You just seen the Tallahassee update cooling down just a little bit here, now down to 86. But in terms of the hurricane situation that we're watching, Shane's going to have much more on this later in the show here, breaking everything down with Patricia, including a, threat, a flood threat that's indirectly related to this. Now, Patricia did have 200 mile an hour sustained winds, the strongest storm ever recorded in the Western Hemisphere. Now you do see the eye though is starting to uh, kind of disintegrate a little bit and this storm is weakening just a little bit. Now down to 190 mile an hour winds, pressure up to 900 millibars. It was down in the 880s earlier. Um, gust 236 miles an hour, so just incredible numbers, life-threatening situation for Mexico that Shane will touch more in on the show, later on in the show. You see the track moving off to the northeast, so it's something We'll keep our eyes on. Again, this is a very dangerous Category 5 hurricane with winds greater than 155 miles an hour. Extreme destruction likely in parts of Mexico. We'll have more on this coming up throughout the show, as well as your local forecast and a look at the game day forecast here for a Florida State game against Georgia Tech tomorrow. But right now, we'll take it back over to the desk where Matt and Jordan are standing by. Hey, thanks so much, Casey. Again, that hurricane crazy. We're thinking about all those folks in Mexico. But on a lighter note, we're going to talk about today in history. In 1925, Johnny Carson was born. I know. And he was the host of The Tonight Show, and that was actually while he was on the show for about 30 years. It was one of the number one and the highest rated shows Amazing, on right? TV. Amazing, right? Broadcasting legend. He was in it forever, and he ended up living to the age of 79. Good for him. He died, in uh, sadly, about 10 years ago. But we are going to bring the news over to Texas right now, where in 1989, 23 people died in a gas explosion at a plastics factory. And right now, Texas isn't actually looking too good. They're experiencing some historic flooding right now. I know. It's tragic. Apparently, October 23rd hasn't been the best day in their history. No, no. But we are going to take it out to Kate with a look at some, more, hopefully, some nicer local temperatures. Thanks, guys. And yeah, we're having really nice temperatures, as you can see on this picture. Really great, beautiful skies that we had saw this afternoon. Lots of sun, just a little bit of clouds, but those temperatures were really lovely and really warm. And as we made it into the evening, those clouds did start to decrease. So if you go out right now, you, you can just see nothing outside, as you can see on this radar. Absolutely nothing. Beautiful conditions. Go out, enjoy the sun on your way from home, from work. You have a really nice drive. Those low temperatures that we saw today, nothing near what we've seen recently. We saw 63 for us here in Tallahassee. Thomasville a little bit cooler at 59, but really nothing that cold that we've had seen. And those temperatures are going to stick around where we're seeing those just 60s for us. Right now, though, bit pretty warm for us. It's 86 Tallahassee, 85 Monticello, 84 Thomasville. Seeing all around from those lower 80s down in Apalachicola, 83 in Carabelle, up to those higher temperatures. But mostly nothing reaching those 90s, but really nice temperatures. And it's going to continue on into this weekend. Not going to be seeing any rain, just a little bit of cloud cover, but nothing too much, no rain, although that rain's going to start coming in on to Sunday night and into later the week. But we're going to have a really great weekend, so if you can, definitely go out and enjoy the beautiful weather and the sunny skies. And it's going to be really nice to get out. For tonight, though, 
65 for us in Tallahassee, a little bit cooler around the area, 61 Monticello, 61 Thomasville. It's going to be partly cloudy, so definitely go out, enjoy those really nice temperatures. If you do happen to go out, take a walk. Just really enjoy that. If we make it, if you're going out tomorrow morning though, there's a chance for that fog between 3 a.m. and 9 a.m. So if you are out going to, out in the morning, make sure you have those low beam lights on just in case of that. But tomorrow again, 83, mostly sunny conditions. It's going to be really great to go out, enjoy your Saturday, and have a really great afternoon with only a slight wind of five miles per hour. And for that weekend and for our next seven days. Again, tomorrow is 83 degrees, really beautiful conditions. Sunday again as well of 84. Just a slight chance of rain, but that rain doesn't really come into effect until Sunday evening where we start getting that rain chances Monday of 40%. And our temperatures do decrease just a little, 78 on Monday. But for this weekend, definitely go out, enjoy it. We're going to have amazing weather, so you can go out, enjoy, go to the park. And you could even want to go out and watch the game. You can go out to a restaurant and go meet up with friends to watch our FSU Knowles beat Georgia Tech. But I'm going to go ahead and send this off to Matt Mackey, where he's going to give us a broader look for our southeast. Hey, thank you so much, Kate. If you take a look at the radar across much of the region, you're going to see sitting real clear, real nice, throughout most of the southeast. If you take a look over here towards the western portions, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, we're seeing a lot of precipitation moving through and that is coming in ahead of some of that flooding we've been hearing about in Texas. Current conditions around the area, we're seeing 80 in New Orleans, a little cooler up in Arkansas, 70 in Little Rock where we're seeing a bunch of that precipitation. As for the majority of the region and the region we're concerned with, Florida, 86 in Tallahassee, 80 in Orlando, 81 down in Miami, so it's looking real nice in our area. Relative humidity, that's a measure of how sticky, how moist it's going to feel out in the air. Over here where I mentioned we're seeing a bunch of this rain, it's real high. 93 in Little Rock, 90 in Shreveport. But throughout the center of this, it's seeing a lot more milder, um, moderate values. 46 in Tallahassee, 46 in Montgomery. So up throughout a lot of the central stretch, it's feeling really nice. Down in South Florida, Miami, Key West, a little, a little higher up at 76 in Key West. The water vapor is closely related to that relative humidity. Out here we're seeing a lot of green. That's a lot of moisture out in the air. So that is associated with the rain systems that are going through the Florida Peninsula, especially Orlando and Miami, not so much the Panhandle. We're seeing a lot of orange, and that's associated with a lot of dry air out in that area. So feeling really dry, really nice there. As far as the 24-hour temperature change goes, up in Arkansas and Little Rock, where we're seeing a bunch of that rain, it dropped 11 degrees in the past 24 hours. That's a bit of a big jump around here. Gained two degrees in Tallahassee, dropped three in Orlando, dropped two in Miami. So not nearly, nearly as drastic of a temperature change. As for tonight, we're seeing 64 in Tallahassee, 57 in Savannah. It's going to be a real nice night, real clear, not too much in the sky to worry about. 72 in New Orleans, up where that rain's passing through, 69 in Shreveport, 66 in Little Rock, a little cooler. Down in Key West, 77 and 74. As always, we're seeing South Florida just a little, little bit warmer. 55 up in Wilmington, North Carolina, so just a little cooler. As far as tomorrow goes, 86 in Tallahassee, 86 in Montgomery. Real nice temperatures, a little cloudy. We're seeing mid-80s throughout a lot of this. Again, up with the rain, 71 in Little Rock, 77 in Shreveport. We're seeing 73 in Wilmington, North Carolina, with just a little more of that sun coming through. Yeah, that was absolutely great to see how the rain just abs affects I know. Um, the temperature changes. It's crazy what it can really do out there. Yes, but mm -hmm. for tomorrow, FSU is playing football. Georgia Tech at Georgia Tech against mm -hmm. the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Right now they are 2-5 and five and they are an ACC in conference. And that kickoff is 7 o'clock tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So but, I'm excited uh, about that. We'll probably hear a lot more about that with uh, Zach's upcoming sports segment. We're going to take it over. Jameis Winston and the Buccaneers. Former Florida State quarterback, of course, I'm sure we all know. He's taken on the Redskins 1 p.m. on Sunday. Now, the Buccos are 2-3 and three under Winston as their quarterback, and they are coming off of a bye week. So we're really hoping Jameis Winston can kind of gel a little bit more with his team and see what they can do. His old nemesis, Marcus Mariota, 
is actually out this week after some illegal hits, which had landed some Dolphins players with serious fines, gave him a serious knee injury. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Absolutely crazy. But yeah. for now, we're going to pass it off to Zach with the wonderful sports segment. Yeah, what's up sports fans? I'm Zach Covey. We start with a look at your game day forecast. 70s across the area for Georgia Tech under mostly cloudy skies. We'll be looking at that come kickoff tomorrow at 7 o'clock on ESPN2. All right, now we take a look at number nine, ranked Florida State Seminoles taking on an unranked and very underrated Georgia Tech football team. Georgia Tech has fallen from six weeks ago, being the top dog in the Coastal Division, to falling to last place in the ACC overall. With a 2-5 and five record, the Yellow Jackets are hyped and ready to take on a Florida State defense that seems to be stifled with injuries. Nate Andrews, limited, linebacker Terrence Smith, missing two games in a row. The defensive injuries have already piled up. But let's go ahead and add another name to the list. Florida State sophomore defensive back Trey Marshall, who suffered a torn bicep tendon on Saturday in the early start against Louisville. He's undergone surgery, and Marshall should miss a couple weeks and could be back by the end of the season, although that's still a stretch. For a Georgia Tech team keen on getting back on the right track, these defensive injuries should aid in their spread offense. Expect Tech to play a lot in the pistol formation and try to force the defense to plug up the middle and allow room for them to air it out over the top. Still, check out these numbers. Georgia Tech running for already over 2,000 yards, even with their 2-5 and five record. Florida State continues to put up decent numbers in passing. The more spectacular number, though, six games, Everett Golson has yet to throw a single interception. A sharp contrast from last season at Notre Dame. But the way the Seminoles have been playing on offense these past few weeks, I still have them coming out on top with Dalvin Cook leading the way and solidifying his name in the Heisman race. I've got FSU in this one. 27-17. Let's switch gears. Let's talk about a team in the FCS that's making some big noise, national noise. ESPN's College Game Day is headed up to Harrisonburg, Virginia this week to watch number three James Madison University take on the number 11 ranked Richmond Spiders. It's an in-state rivalry that's been waiting to happen all season long. This will be the sixth time ESPN's College Game Day has stopped at an FCS school. Game Day producer Lee Fitting is a 1996 graduate of JMU. Here's a look at their numbers. JMU continues to dominate with a 7-0 record, but Richmond is hot on their tail with a 5-1 record. Both enter the contest with an undefeated record in conference play, so needless to say, both are hungry to keep that streak alive. Richmond's converting 96 of its offensive drives to points, while JMU stumbles slightly, converting 89% of their drives. Still, I think this is going to be a heated battle. Many students are hungry to watch. And also, here's some photos. Of course, ESPN's College Game Day is known for its signs. Twitter user Kay Nickens sent us this photo of her sign with a play on the word of the children's song, The Itsy Bitsy Spider. Of course, Richmond's mascots, that's the spiders. ING sports photographer Danny Christensen tweeted this photo also showing the calm and beautiful campus before the storm of students onto their quad. And finally, tomorrow morning, check out JMU senior Kendall Alexander, who sent in these spectacular photos from game day itself. It looks like amazing weather. Temperature is going to be sitting in the 70s, right in the heart of the Shenandoahs. I've got a very close one in Harrisonburg. I'm taking JMU 32-30. That's all I've got for you, your Seminole Sports Wrap. Remember, Roberto Aguirre for Heisman 2015. Hi, Kyle Rigney, reporting live in studio tonight, Zach Covey for FSU. Much, Zach. That was absolutely great. Awesome. Take it back to a wonderful um, local view right now. Current temperatures for the past 24 hours, we saw a big difference, a big jump of at least 20 degrees, 63 starting out at 7 a.m., up to about 87 by 5 p.m. That's a pretty large temperature difference. But as we go take a look more currently around the Big Bend region, 86 in Tallahassee, 83 in St. Mark's. That is quite high for this time of year, especially for late October. But as we go to local radar, nothing, nothing on the radar. It's absolutely gorgeous day outside. We do have a couple clouds keeping, uh, keeping that shade out there, making these temperatures a lot more bearable. As we zoom out on the radar, the only rain that we do see is out by Shreveport and Little Rock, Texas, seeing some historic flooding out there. And I feel bad for them because Patricia is going to bring them even more rain, probably something close to what South Carolina was seeing earlier. Futurecast temperatures tonight, 79 Tallahassee, 79 Quincy. But as we go farther into Saturday morning, wonderful 68 degrees. And as we go into the highs for tomorrow, it's going to start to cool down. Only a high of 78. The only hot spots are up in Georgia, where Bainbridge, Thomasville, and Valdosta are all seeing 
80 degrees. As we go farther into the night, it's going to cool down to the high 60s, and in Sunday morning, it's going to warm back up to the mid 70s. Out on the water, we are seeing some more wind and more waves. A light to water chop, mostly sunny though. Sunrise and sunset, those times are getting shorter, so be sure to bring a flashlight with you if you are going to head out on the boat. If you are going to go out in the sand, temp water temperatures are only at 74 degrees, so it might not be great if you're from South Florida like me where it's kind of cold for 74. UV next is a little high, so if you do want to go out for a walk on the beach, be sure to carry that sunscreen with you. Tonight though, 65, partly cloudy, and because of that clouds and that moisture in the atmosphere, we are going to see some possible fog, so be sure to drive with caution if you are going anywhere on Saturday morning. Keep your headlights on. Absolutely. So just to be sure on that, planning out your game day, it is going to be quite a hot one as we warm up from 63 to about 83 degrees. Not much, not much clouds out there except the morning fog. But the week ahead looking pretty good for this, for tomorrow I should say, 83. But as we go into the rest of the week, it is going to start to cool down as those rain temperatures increase. And we certainly need that rain, so I'm looking forward to that. But now we are going to pass it to the desk with Blake and Kate. Thanks, Jordan. And those that next week, 70 temperatures, so it's very fall-like. Yes, I get, yeah, and I can't wait for those fall-like um, colors to come around our region. Yep, the north is definitely seeing those peak of colors, definitely getting. Yeah, the, the fall foliage colors are coming uh, into the northeast and the Midwest. The north uh, actually just peaked around Minnesota. Um, they are actually overseeing their um, fall colors, but I know Iowa and other areas around the Midwest are seeing those. Those oranges and yep. reds. As we make it down farther south, Virginia and Georgia, mm -hmm. they're getting into those colors just as much. And I guess the science behind why yeah. these colors are yeah, changing. What, ma what makes those leaves turn red and orange? Well, as the day gets shorter, we have less sun and the cooler temperatures. So the plant doesn't produce as much chlorophyll oh, as okay. it's making, so we don't see as much color. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Down here in the uh, Tallahassee region, we are seeing those um, cooler temperatures in the region the and we are going to go You're actually over, gonna what? take on I'm gonna go take Florida on for around us. Florida um, on the desk so let's go take a look at the low temperatures today Tallahassee region 63 degrees is your low temperature and as we go down south along Florida we can see those temperatures get warmer down to 74 in Miami and 70 in uh, Tampa tonight so it's like pretty mild as we go f further south in uh, Florida, but pretty a nice a nice night for Tallahassee and regions up north and along Georgia. And currently, uh, it is 86 degrees in Tallahassee, 86 as well in Tampa, and a little cooler down towards Miami and West Palm Beach. But that is due to some cloud cover and some uh, spotty showers that they are seeing coming off of the Atlantic. And 74 up in Jacksonville, and a little cooler over in Pensacola at 77. And the radar, not much to see around the sh Sunshine State except for those spotty showers, like I said, moving into the uh, southern parts of Florida. And actually a few showers up off the coast of Jacksonville that should be moving into the, the, that region pretty soon. But yeah, bring down those temperatures, but also bring up the humidity, which is making it feel a lot more warm uh, across the south um, parts, portions of Florida. The relative humidity is showing that with Miami, 58% uh, um, humidity, 76 in Key West, and 58 in um, Orlando. As we move across the state, it gets a little more dry with these oranges um, in near towards the West Tam uh, Tampa area. But 46% up in Tallahassee, a lot drier down uh, up here than it is in Miami, and uh, 48 up in Atlanta, where we are going to be playing against Georgia Tech tomorrow. But looking at your future forecast radar, we can see those rain showers in the south uh, part of, of our state just rolling across um, into the Gulf of Mexico, popping up again uh, during uh, the day Saturday. And as we move into uh, Sunday AM, we can see more of those showers. And we're going to get more cloud cover in our region um, starting around 7, uh, 7 PM. We might see a 10% chance, uh, chance of showers associated with that cloud cover, but nothing more than a sprinkle, no, no lightning or tornadoes in our region, and uh, especially no flooding like they're seeing in Texas. Um, but your, for tonight's forecast, it's going to be 64 in Tallahassee, 69 in Tampa, and uh, 69 down in Fort Myers. But for tomorrow's forecast, 
86 in Tallahassee, much like today, um, 88 in Tampa, and down towards the south part of our state, it's going to be 86 and 86 in Miami. And let's um, go ahead and talk about what the real story is, which is Hurricane Patricia with Shane. Thanks, Blake. This is the big weather story of the day. Hurricane Patricia is spinning away off the western coast of Mexico and having broken several records already, it proves to be a life-threatening situation. Here's our infrared satellite imagery of Patricia as it's currently centered just hours, maybe minutes away from landfall on the west central coast of Mexico here outlined in black. These vibrant pink colors in the middle of the imagery indicate really tall clouds and really strong convection. This means very powerful storms. We see that very well-defined eye here beginning to weaken a little bit, which is good news. The landfall will start to rip this storm apart, which is good news. But all the same, it is a very life-threatening situation. Our data isn't working right now because the storm is so strong, our graphics just can't take it. But we do have the numbers copied down for you, just in case of such an emergency. Patricia has currently got winds sustained at 190 miles per hour with a minimum pressure of 900 millibars. This is an extremely strong Category 5 tropical cyclone and should be taken very seriously. Its current projected path takes it from its current location here just off the coast of Mexico and then it will make landfall within the next few hours and by tonight into Saturday morning it will gradually cross the Mexican plateau and the mountains in that region and then we're thinking that by the early afternoon of Sunday Patricia will begin to make its way into the United States into the Texas region which we're sorry to say is one region that just doesn't need any more rainfall I'm gonna step out of the way here as we advance into our flood alerts there are many of these we have Flash flood warnings from Fort Worth and Dallas down into the Austin area and Houston, which is under coastal flood advisories, in addition to San Antonio, also under this flash flood watch. These dark red shaded areas are flash flood warnings. These are regions currently experiencing torrential rainfall, and all these advisories go out through the early a.m. hours tomorrow morning, but we would not be surprised to see them extended through the rest of the weekend because... As Patricia begins to move into the area, if it retains any of its strength and organization, it will continue to inundate this area with torrential amounts of rainfall. Here's our future cast of rainfall. By tomorrow afternoon, we see heavy bands of rainfall finally clearing out of Dallas, moving into the Austin and the Houston area, continuing to flood this great state of Texas with more rainfall than it deserves during this October. And then that will finally mercifully begin to clear out of there by the early afternoon hours of Sunday. And it's around that point that Patricia might become a player in this weather situation. But for now, we're going to bring it back home really fast and tell you that tonight we're going to get down a low of 64 in Tallahassee, 61 in Valdosta, jumping up again tomorrow for a clear warm day, 86 in Tallahassee, 87 in Valdosta. And now let's throw it back to Blake and Kate at the desk. Thank you very much, Shane. Yeah, the, Texas has been seeing a lot of rain, but do you know a state that hasn't been seeing a lot of rain? Well, that actually won't be. Hawaii oh, actually yeah, won't be seeing a lot of rain. saw I'm sorry. a lot of rain this summer. <laughs> they and did. So, uh, but it actually helped. They had a drought since 2008, so it actually relinquished that drought. But as we go into the winter, though, they're actually not going to see as much rain. Yeah, the residents in Hawaii should see about half of the average of rain fall for them in the winter in the next coming months. Uh, so going from a flip-flop to getting lots of rain uh, to yeah. having no rain it's a it's it's quite a struggle for them in hawaii yeah so we'll see how those the dole plantation with the pineapples yeah yeah take i love them. pineapples so i, I hope that the, <laughs> those uh, plantations don't struggle with this drought i, I want to see those pineapples but uh zach's going to take us for our last local I'm going to see some pineapples in December. I'm excited. Uh, nice afternoon out at the medical building on Facebook. Melissa Gibson sent this photo in. Beautiful sky, blue sky, just a couple of cumulus clouds across the area, but otherwise very nice afternoon. Currently on campus, we're sitting at 86 degrees, partly cloudy skies. 
take a look at that humidity still sitting around 46 percent. It's feeling refreshing outside. Absolutely great with an east wind at nine miles an hour. We are beginning to get some more clouds across the area. No more just cloudless days. We're going to begin to see more clouds as we approach the weekend. Still, temperatures will continue to sit in the 80s, though, for a while. 81 in Valdosta, 86 in Tallahassee, 85 in St. Mark's, 80 at the coastline down near Apalachicola and Carabell. Relative humidity values, again, across the area, still sitting around those 40s. It's feeling refreshing just about everywhere you go. Even at the coastline, just a couple of low 60s. It'll feel a little more humid, but still, the low 60s, not that bad in comparison to 70s or 80s. That's when you're starting to really feel oppressive and sweating nonstop. Local radar, there's nothing on it. We have been showing you this radar uh, for basically all this week where the timestamp's just running and nothing's running actually behind us. We take a more broad look out and there's the next trough moving across the area. Plenty of clouds and rain with it. That's the low that's moving on into Texas that Shane was talking about. More rain also from the hurricane that'll eventually add to their rainfall totals. For us, we won't be seeing any of that hurricane rain. Just this trough as it continues to march its way should begin to lift northward, but still a couple of sprinkles can't be ruled out. Here we are talking about your planning the weekend. Again, a couple of clouds hit and miss here and there. Still a relatively nice day. Notice there's no real rainfall until we start getting into your Sunday evening. That's when we can begin to see a couple of sprinkles popping up here and there, say around Taylor County areas west near Ma uh, Mariana, excuse me, and out towards Pensacola. Again, a couple of sprinkles. Otherwise, a fairly nice weekend. Tonight, we're talking about 65 degrees, partly cloudy skies. With those calm winds, though, east at 5 miles an hour, but if they can get to calm, we could be looking at some fog possible from 3 to 9 a.m. as you head out the door tomorrow, just in case you're heading out early. Maybe you're getting to Atlanta for that game day. You've got nice travel weather all the way up to Atlanta, 63 at 8, 79 at noon, and 83 at 5. It's going to be a gorgeous day to either go outside and play, fo play football or just stay inside and watch football. And then that trough will begin to approach our region Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll boost those rain chances with it, those clouds. But take a look at the temperatures. We'll be bringing them back down into the 70s, lows in the 60s. By next Friday, we could be looking at low temperatures reaching the upper 50s. It's going to be feeling quite nice outside. Maybe you'll need that jacket. Start digging in the back of your closet. Guys, back at the desk, how do you like that? Well, I like it, especially for this weekend. We're going to get really nice weather. Of course, yeah. I, can, I can't wait for the, these um, nice temperatures for Saturday and Sunday. I, yeah. I'm definitely not going to stay inside. i got to oh, get outside for that. Definitely. And you going to do anything for watching the game? Um, I am actually going to probably go out to um, a local bar or something, yeah. watch the game there. What about you? Sounds good. I don't know. My parents came down this weekend, so I'll probably show them around town, do all okay. that stuff, and probably watch the game somewhere. Yeah, yeah, but on, on, during the day Saturday, I'm probably going to go out to um, Wakulla and spend the day out there with those beautiful temperatures. Yeah, it's going to be really nice weather to definitely get out and enjoy mm. it all. And well, with a little bit of rain coming in onto Monday and Tuesday, but it drops down those temperatures. I do like seeing 70s. Yeah, I love those 70s. It, when, when we're going into fall, I feel like we should bring back those 70s more often. Right? I know, I and mean, we just get into the 80s too much, and I just, I love my fall weather. <laughs> <laughs> But again, this weekend's going to be really nice, so definitely go out and enjoy. And as always, you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter, even Instagram. And you can always, watch always. Us, you can watch us on livestream.com yes. slash FSU weather to watch us anytime. But thank you for watching us tonight. It's been a pleasure giving you all the weather. And you can always join us next Monday at 6 o'clock at the same time. Have a great weekend. I'm student meteorologist Kate Nagel. I'm student meteorologist Blake Fleming. Thank you. Have a great night.